Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Hopefully everybody is having a fabulous Monday morning. Unfortunately, it is Monday, so um, that's unfortunate. Sorry, I was trying to fix my little woo here. Let me get that off of there. I don't want the echo in the background. That's terrible. That would be terrible. How is everybody today? I just saw you last night. Um, I don't know. What time was it? We got off of our live 1030 or so. So it hasn't been too long. Hello, Mendel. Hello, sugar and spice and everything. Nice. If you're still here, I know you're going to go and check a couple things out because I was a little late. Good afternoon from the UK, Claire. Oh, I love that. I need to travel the countries, like different countries. I've only been to Canada. Um, and I don't think that really counts because we only went like right across the border to Windsor and that was it. So I feel like I need to travel a little more. I do have a couple things I wanted to go over while we're waiting on some more people to join. Um, I just wanted to get your guys' you know, opinion on some things. And I wanted to tell you about our members only. So I'll just do that really quick. But um, Discord, would you be interested in me starting one? If you guys don't know what, Dis what Discord is, it's an app that you can, um, it's basically like an app where you can go and chat about cases that we're covering and we can chat kind of like in real time. That way it's not always just like on video. We can actually, you know, chat throughout the whole day. So let me know if that's something that you would be interested in doing because I could set that up. I don't mind. I just, I've never done it before. So we'll be learning together. So that's the only downfall. <laughs> And that is that we're going to be learning together, but also I'm trying to learn when I should come on and do my, um, lives and you guys can let me know at the end or throughout the live. Um, but just let me know if mornings work better or if evenings work better for you and I will come on then. If you missed our live from last night, we had a really good live. Um, so stick with me because it's going to get really good. But I just wanted to get through this stuff because I haven't done, um, I haven't told you guys really about our members only or any of this stuff on any of our lives. So I just wanted to kind of go through it just really quick. But um, we do have a members only tab now and you can, you can click the join now button below or you can go on the main page and you can join there. We have one, we have one, uh, three different tiers. So basically what you get with that, and it just depends on what the, uh, the tier that you choose but you get members only live chats, priority reply to comments, members only live chats, early access to new videos, member shout outs, exclusive member only videos, member only live streams, the life, my life vlog, life vlogs, and more pictures of behind the scenes, um, connecting on social media, life vlog, along with pictures of behind the scenes and bloopers. And I can also, if you do tier three, I can help you build a business like an LLC or a YouTube channel. So that's all I have for that. I just wanted to let you guys know. Thank you for being so patient with me. <laughs> um, don't forget to like, you know, like, comment, subscribe, please. Those all do help my channel grow. Also, it, that's what I was saying earlier. If you're with us last night, um, you know, we watched the whole hour long interview with Brian Eaton um, at News Nation. I don't know if you guys caught that or not, if you're with us, but it was a really good interview. He did a really good job um, and he did a really good interview on the four um, Idaho slangs that happened on November 13th with, uh, you know, University of Idaho students. And that's what we're going over today. So we're going to go back over kind of the interview. Um, we didn't really get to talk about it too much because we were busy watching it. We, we would talk through like the commercial breaks, but we really didn't get to talk too much. Oh, hello, Isabel. Wonder what time is it where you're at? Is it... I can't remember if it's morning or night. I think it's morning more like more afternoon, maybe ish because it's morning for me here. <laughs> um, lastly, I don't have mods. Um, so that's why the chat is such a subscriber only mode. If you guys were wondering, um, it just kind of helps, you know, when I'm going through different pages. Um, so that way the chat doesn't get like crazy, but I want to thank everybody for joining me today. I really, truly appreciate you guys coming and spending a little bit of your morning and afternoon with me. Also, all comments, likes, super chats, super thanks are all welcomed and appreciated. And how many guys, how many of you guys seen the interview last night on News Nation um, with Brian Eaton? He did a interview with Kaylee um, Gonzalez's parents, and they had some really good um, new details that emerged. Kind of shocking details, I feel like that emerged. Um, so not like too shocking, but kind of shocking. 
So I was going to go back over that for you guys, with you guys, and we were just going to watch it together. Um, and I also like, for some reason I had, um, I have YouTube TV, like I signed up for it and everything. So that way we could watch this last night, but I can't find the episode on YouTube TV anywhere. So we're just going to watch it through my video. Um, it should work just fine. If it acts funny, then I'll find um, a different one, but. I figured this would be fine. And I think I had it up to where they were starting almost. Let me just go back a little bit. I think that's where they were starting actually. Eye problems or muscle weakness maybe. Okay. And um, so the only thing is you'll just see like, you'll see like the comments or whatever at the bottom. Like, you know, when I like put them up for the, you know, the comments in the um, chat, but you can still be able to get the gist and you'll be able to see the whole interview and we'll stop it and go over some things as well. And I did write some notes out last night, so um, we can even go over that stuff. There was, I don't know, I, there was a lot that was said, so um, we'll just kind of go over it if you like. Oh, 10, oh yeah, that's, yep, yep, 10.40 now in Ohio, 3.33 p.m. Oh, that's better. That's better for you, Isabel. You're usually up late with us, it seems like. I'm going to check um, the News Nation, on, I, I'm going to check... Um, Twitter really quick to make sure there's like nothing that I have missed. So we know about that. Okay. Um, oh, and then did you guys know that the two surviving witnesses, they ended up, they broke their silence. They actually um, kind of came out um, and like talked about it and stuff. Let me see if I can just pull that up too. We'll go ahead and watch that one first and then we'll go to the other one because um, I think this one's I haven't I haven't watched this one yet, but this one might be it. Um, but yeah, so the two girls that were um, the two surviving, you know, victims or I'll call them victim survivors of the home. They were actually um, they came out and they did. They just talked through a, it was a preacher that kind of, they gave them a note to kind of read and tell their feelings. They're probably really torn up about stuff. So that's probably, I'm assuming why they haven't really came out and spoke, um, you know, about the case and about what happened and what they saw. So that's what I'm thinking anyway. So I thought it was kind of nice that he, they, um, he wrote, you know, them. So let me see here. We'll just go ahead and we'll listen to this real quick and then we'll get on and we'll go on to the interview as well in Moscow, Idaho, fears are mounting in the community that the case turn it out for you. is growing cold. The hunt for the killer who stabbed four college students to death in their beds on November 13th is now entering its fourth week. For the first time this weekend, we heard from the victim's two other roommates who were home the night of the deadly attack, but were not hurt. At a prayer vigil on Friday, a local pastor reading a letter from Dylan Mortensen. My life was greatly impacted to have known these four beautiful people my people who changed my life in so many ways and made me so happy. And a letter from Bethany Funk. They all lit up any room they walked into and were gifts to this world. Moscow police say the two young women are not considered suspects. Authorities recently clarifying that the attack was targeted but have not concluded whether a specific victim was the target or the house in general. They are vowing to get to the bottom of the crime. We're putting the pieces together. And I think when that picture is done, I think we'll have a real clear definition of what occurred and where to go. But with no answers, the heartbreak remains raw for the loved ones of Kaylee Gonsalves, Maddie Mogan, Ethan Chapin, and Zana Carnodal. Kaylee's father believes the pace of the investigation is moving too slowly, speaking out on Fox News with information that the police have not released themselves. Their means of death don't match. Their points of damage don't match. Which would seem to indicate that one of the girls suffered different kinds of stab wounds. These are the kinds of things that would be distinctive and indicate.
All right, so we're starting a new week here. Do we expect to hear anything from authorities uh, at this point, Steph? Well, we're waiting on an autopsy, and an autopsy can tell you, tell you a number of things. Mm -hmm. It can talk about DNA, it can mm -hmm. talk about manner of death, but we don't have a timeline on when that autopsy is going to be released, or if it will be. Mm. Yeah. All right. So many questions. Yeah. yeah. I think Steph. they're trying to protect a lot of privacy yeah. for the investigation's mm -hmm. sake, but there are just so many people mm -hmm. who want to know. It's such an unusual crime, and to not have a publicly named suspect at this point has mm -hmm. a lot of people pretty shocked. Yeah, yeah. especially in college students on edge, too. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Thank, so. thank you. So, sorry about that. Yeah. I couldn't get, I, when you have like so many tabs open, I don't even know which one was like playing. So good morning, Mystic Werewolf. Yeah, I'm hearing that too, that the food truck guy that left to Africa. That's crazy. I don't, I don't, that's crazy. Yeah. I mean, he still rubs me the wrong way. I, I don't know. I mean, in the beginning of the case, I thought for sure that was who had something to do with it. Just the way he was acting and stuff. Maybe we need to watch that food truck video again. I did, we did a live the other night where like, it was kind of like going back to the beginning of the case, you know, and trying to like declutter our brain from everything. So um, if you guys want to watch that live, it was pretty good. Um, but I think we need to do another one of those. So I don't know. It's just crazy. We need to look into that guy a little bit more. That's for sure. So I can go ahead and play through the um, interview that we played last night. Let me see. I'm trying to think of um, what else I want. If I needed to play anything else for you first. I'm trying to find out where I put it. Actually, there's the video. Okay, so um, like I said, this is going to be like a vi This is the video of mine last from last night because um, I couldn't find it back when YouTube TV, like I underneath my history, like my watch history, it just wasn't there. So I'm just going to um, play my video from last night because we didn't talk through the interview other than in the chat. Um, and then during the commercial breaks, we'll stop or whatever. And we'll have like a discussion about what is going on because there's a lot of really um, good information that we got out of it. I think. Titanium, can I say the place I saw that? Yeah, you can say that. Yeah. I can even look it up if you want me to. That's fine. Yeah, for sure. I would love that. Um, okay, let me see. So, um, we, oh yeah, and also before we get started, I'm here alone today. I, in the mornings, I'm by myself. So if my dogs bark, I'm just gonna, I'll mute it and I'll tell them to stop barking. But <laughs> sometimes they're just, you know, they're dogs. That's what they do. So also, if you're just now coming into the chat, this is, we do talk all things true crime here. If you would love to uh, subscribe to the channel, we would love to have you. I do have it on subscriber only mode because of the fact that I am the only one here. I don't have mods. So with that said, just please like the video, please subscribe. It really helps the channel grow. Okay. So I think this is the part where it was at. So let me go ahead and share this one with you. Yeah, Moscow. Okay, so Mystic World was said Moscow PD is terrible. Joe Vidit, the the tan hat guy, said, um, and that's the tan hat guy that was at the food truck that night. Um, said Le didn't ask him once about the hoodie guy, and that he had to bring up the hoodie guy himself. He also stated that the cops didn't call him back when he called them. So Joe called the police. Um, we saw that in one of my lives. I did a TikTok, and I think I did a pre-recorded video actually on that. And he says that he called the officers at Moscow and they didn't call him back. So he had to actually physically go down there and talk to them. So I don't think that's good that people are actually going down there and having to talk to them and clear themselves. Like Jeremy, you know, the neighbor, he went down by himself and gave his DNA for some reason on his own. Like, here you go. Here's my DNA. The officers weren't even looking for his DNA. I'm not sure why. Real, I mean, I don't know why he really was like, okay, here, take it. But, you know, that's what he did. So I'm going to go ahead and play this video. And then we will talk in the chat while we're, like, watching it. This is kind of what we did last night, too. Um, I want to make sure. Let's see. Which one is it? Okay. Let me see. 
One of these guys. There it is. I'm like, it's one of these guys. Yeah, no, I mean, I don't, I just, no, he, um, if I'm wrong, I'll apologize. Um, Penn Dizzy said, yeah, no, I, I, he rubbed me the wrong way. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know what is going on. I'm while we're watching this, I'm going to check Moscow PD's website and see if they did an update for today because they didn't do an update yesterday and they've been really on top of doing updates every single day. And I find it ironic that they didn't do an update on the day that this interview happened and came out because there's some explosive stuff in here. I feel like the officers are going to have to, you know, um, they're going to have to come out and tell us why these things are being said, because obviously there are huge developments in this case. And, you know, I mean, just huge development. So I'm going to start playing it because in the, right in the beginning, right off the rip, like right when we first start hearing it, the video, he like comes out with explosive details. So it's kind of crazy. Um, but I will start playing it for you guys. It's a really good interview. And not a lot of other channels had the full interview. I don't even know if any, I haven't seen any other channels have the full interview. Maybe a sign of a life threatening condition. Do this is just a little commercial. If you have a skin infection, side effects may include allergic reactions, injections, and then you're headed, eyebrow, oh, eyelid. Do I have that on like, okay. So also, and I'm like I said before, you're going to see like this is from last night, like the little like pop ups for the, you know, the chat and stuff. You're just going to see those. So sorry, guys. Dripping and I, would I, I couldn't find the actual video back on, like I said, on my YouTube TV. I don't know why. So we're just going to play it off my video. Tell your doctor about your medical history, muscle or nerve conditions, and medications, including botulinum toxins, as these may increase the risk of serious side effects. See for yourself at BotoxCosmetic.com. So what's the next? Whoa. Whoa. What's next? You tell me, man. Rockstar energy drink. I'm Brian Enton, live in Moscow, Idaho tonight. The murder mystery has reignited the, the, the murder here. Uh, the online sleuthing community who gained notoriety during the search for Gabby Petito in 2021. We are talking about the armchair detectives, people who sift through social media looking for any possible clue. And in the vacuum of information from Moscow police, their voices are louder than ever. Here's News the Nation's Ashley Banfield. What we know is that six missed calls were made from Kaylee to Jack's phone, her ex-boyfriend. From the start, amateur investigators shared their theories on the Moscow, Idaho quadruple murders. The case has gripped the nation. People are craving as much information as possible, trying to put the pieces together themselves. Can you talk about these slings in Moscow, Idaho? I'm wondering if it was a friend, not one of the roommates. This is or... just as pretty much everybody talking about this case, pure speculation. Partly fueled by a lack of information from the police. Everybody has an opinion and they want to come out and say it. And so what that does is that detracts from the public's ability to trust the information that's out there. Police have always had to work around rumors. They sift through leads, discarding the hoaxes and the hearsay to try to get to the credible tips. But the sheer volume of tips in this case could take a toll on police resources. But... They could also crack the case. Nearly 500 digital media tips have come in to an FBI page dedicated to the case. The Moscow police are on rumor control, both on their website and during their news conferences. Often, the rumors get started on social media. Okay, I have no like qualifications to be speaking on the Idaho murders, other than the fact that I just have been keeping up with them. And this is my theory on like multiple parts of the case, okay? Social media Media sites seizing the moment, setting algorithms to gain traction on the Idaho case. TikTok posts with the hashtag Idaho murders have more than 90 million views. Reddit forums with 27,000 members and private Facebook groups, each with tens of thousands of people, are all talking about the Idaho murders and are ripe with wild speculation. Many delving into Kaylee, Zana, Madison, and Ethan's own social media accounts. 
but these crowdsourced investigations can also ruin lives as they track down so-called suspects on their own. First, it was the young man in the hoodie seen at the food truck in a video that surfaced days after the murders. Police were flooded with questions about who he was. I think a lot of people were curious about that person. Um, we were able to identify him. Police have since cleared that man, but online sleuths soon turned their attention to a new suspect, a neighbor of the victims named Jeremy Reagan. He's a third year law student at the University of Idaho and gave a TV interview about the comings and goings at the house where the kids were murdered. He admits that he'd given a nervous smile while talking about the crime. Some viewers took issue and made him a target. Soon he moved from target to suspect and it was open season on the internet. People online have just been ruthless. They went through, gone through all of my social media history over the past decade, partly because of all the reports that the people had sent in about me in the interview I did. Reagan has spoken with the police and even volunteered his DNA. But when he didn't hear back from the officers, he simply went to the station himself and gave police a sample. But as amateur investigators continue to dig deep into his personal life, contacting his friends and his family, Jeremy is now so concerned that he carries a pistol for protection. Amateur detectives have had some success before. During the Gabby Petito case, social media hashtags exploded with billions of views. It was social media users that put many of the pieces together and gave police strong clues as to where to look. Back in Moscow, Idaho, with every day that the four murders go unsolved, the online investigative community is sure to grow. Each wanting to be the cyber sleuth that unlocks the mystery and solves the crime. But at what cost to the professional investigators and to the public? And Ashley Banfield joins me now. Ashley, you have been on this story since the very beginning. You've been doing it every single night on your show. We know with the Gabby Petito case, the online sleuths really had, had an impact, helped solve what happened. Do you think that could happen in this case? So the reality is, Brian, that every police officer will tell you when trying to solve a case, there is no detail that is too small. And they ask the public to bring forth any details because sometimes that minute detail can be the linchpin that opens up an entire other set of facts. Well. I don't know how many uh, total officers have eyes on this, but you know it's upwards of maybe somewhere below 100. And with the online community, they may be able to triangulate some details between photos that may go missed by the detectives on the case. So in one circumstance, it is highly effective to have that many more eyes that could point out something that's critical to the case. But as we just heard, it can also be detrimental, Brian, to Jeremy Reagan and people like him who all of a sudden become targets for attacks. And those attacks can be relentless. I will also say this, Brian, it is not as though an online community hasn't had incredible success before. You mentioned Gabby Petito. There was also mm. a serial killer in Canada that the online community found before the police found him and the police ignored them. So there are some lessons to be learned from that. And there are some things the community can actually help with in terms of investigation. And you mentioned Jeremy. I saw him on your show the other night. He actually lives right down the way here. I can see his apartment from where I'm standing. You can't help but feel bad for that guy. I heard him on your show say uh, that he actually went to the police to stay, uh, station to, to give up his own DNA just because he wanted to clear his name. All right, Ashley, don't go anywhere because we are going to talk to you uh, about this breaking news that we talked about um, at the top of the show, the new revelations that we have, that we have confirmed about the conditions of the bodies, what that might mean uh, in terms of, of who was targeted. We're going to get to that uh, coming up right after this break. We are live from Moscow, Idaho tonight. Still ahead, a confounding crime scene. It's still no named suspect, still no named 
uh, persons of interest. I want to bring back in Ashley Banfield. And Ashley, I've been looking forward to this because I want to talk to you about this new information that we confirmed just before the special today. The new information is uh, that Kaylee Gonzalez's injuries were significantly more brutal. That is, that is what I can say, significantly more brutal than her best friend Maddie's injuries. Uh, what do you make of that new piece of information? Ashley. Well, it's astounding, uh, for one, because this is the first time, Brian, that you've been able to get the kind of information that helps us to perhaps try to figure out why this happened. Not saying this is definitive, but it certainly is one additional clue as to whether perhaps Kaylee might have been the target. But you got more information that makes it almost more complicated, and that is where the girls were found. So walk us through what you discovered today, because many of us didn't know which room um, when Kaylee's father said they were found in the same room and in the same bed. Yeah, let me show you, Ashley. I want to take you up the hill here and, and get you oriented. Um, this is the front of the house. There's now private security out front. Uh, and oh, my because it's going and it's very, very slippery. But we're going to walk you up to the back of the house. Um, no windows on the side of the house. You've got the front door obviously on the front, which we know has, has the coded lock. Um, on the back of the house, though, is where the bedrooms are. Confirmed um, that key injuries... Brian, I think we just lost your mic, uh, and I'm not sure... There, no, you're back, you're back. Can you just repeat what you said in the last 10 seconds? Your mic went dead. Yeah, I'm sorry. I was explaining that we, we confirmed that um, Kaylee's injuries were more significantly brutal than Maddie's. We've also confirmed that they were on the third floor. I'm going to have Mo show you. Uh, third floor here where not easy access. You've got the balcony. There's a slider. You can't easily jump up there. So what this has us wondering, Ashley, and I want you to kind of walk me, through this with me, if Kaylee's injuries were the most severe up on the third floor, and there's no way out of the third floor, would that mean the killer specifically targeted the third floor? Because it doesn't make any sense. Why would the killer go up to a floor where there would not be an easy exit for him? What do you make of that, Ashley? Well, it's, it's significant in that we still don't know where the killings began. Did they begin on the second floor where Zana Kernodal's room was? And of course, Ethan had been staying over that night. And we now know that that room was the room on the far side of the house. So not the side of the house that you're on right now, on the other side of the house at the front of the house. That's Zana and Ethan's. And then did they progress to the third floor? And while your mic was cutting out, I think the key piece of information that, that the audience couldn't hear was which room upstairs on the third floor uh, the girls were actually found in. That, that before now, we only knew they were found together, but we didn't know in Maddie's room or in Kaylee's room. And so as we look at the third floor map right there, uh, bedroom number E, or bedroom E, is Maddie's bedroom, and it looks out the back of the house, and bedroom F is 
Kaylee's bedroom and it looks out the front, but also the back where the slider is. So what did you discover about which room, Maddie's room on the left or Kaylee's room on the right? That's right. We have we confirmed that they were in Maddie's room, um, which which is also interesting. That's something that we did not know. So Kaylee. I just wanted to say something about that, too. So they were found in Maddie's room. And um, let me just like go back and see if I can just like put it on where that's here. OK, so they were found over here in Maddie's room. And if you think about it. The so Ethan and Zaina would have been found like they were found like over here, like you know, downstairs almost like on the second floor. And so they would have been like far away from each other. If you see like the house, like how it's laid out, like bedroom E is all the way over here, and like you know, they were all the way in like bedroom. I can't remember the this is like a different layout where it says E and F, but the layout I saw it was bedroom A and A1, I think, and A2, and they were in A1, I believe. But it was where there was nothing above them. So nothing above them, only something someone below them could hear. But bedroom E had nothing below them. That was an empty bedroom. And then it would have been a hallway to get to the other bedroom also. So I just thought that was really interesting because that could have been why nobody heard anything. And I can show you a better um, example if you guys would like me to. Just let me know in the comments. I can always pull up the, bl the blueprints of the house and show you. Is Kaylee's bedroom and it looks out the front but also the back where the slider is so what did you discover about which room Maddie's room on the left or Kaylee's room on the right that's right we have we confirmed that they were in Maddie's room um which which is also interesting that's something that we did not know so Kaylee's injuries were significantly more brutal but they were sleeping together um, in Maddie's room. So, so that helps put the puzzle together. There's also something new that helped put the puzzle together. And it was on your show. It was an exclusive interview you had on your show Friday night with Zana's mother. We had never heard from her before. She called into your show. I want to play uh, what she said, and then we can talk about it on the other side, Ashley. Her father mentioned to me that he had just went and replaced the lock the weekend before. Her, you said her father mentioned to you that they had replaced the lock? Yes, that, they, that he had, or he had fixed it or something, but yeah, he said that he had fixed it the week before, just to make sure the it week was, before. It was so, yeah, yeah. I do not think it was the house that was targeted. I believe wholeheartedly that it was those kids who were targeted. Um, they weren't just acquaintances. These kids were like best friends. They, they practically were family. These kids were tight knit. They were good friends. Um, they they were like family. They were around each other constantly. They did everything together. Um, how could it not be a planned thing? You know, how could it not have been targeted? We of Zana's mom here. Like any Okay, so yeah. I Sorry. wanted to ask you I two significant things Two significant things that stood out to me during that interview. Number one, uh, what she said about the door locks. Number two, that she feels that, I think she put it, these kids were targeted. Talk right. to me about why two, those two things, I mean, they're new, and what do they mean? Critical, and I just wanted to make sure that our viewers knew that was the voice of Zana's mom. Uh, she wasn't on video because she's so distraught. That was just her voice that we heard. But she said that the locks um, had been worked on by Steve. Uh, or rather by Jeff Cronodal, uh, Zana's uh, dad, just the weekend before, she couldn't confirm whether the lock that, ha that he had fixed was on Zana's room or whether it was a, a lock to the outside of the house. But I did say, did the rooms have individual locks? And she believed that Zana's room did have a lock. So very, very significant because we've been trying to figure out, and there's a, there's a picture right there on the screen on the left-hand side is what one of the rooms in the house used to have in it, a coded lock to get into an individual bedroom and that each bedroom had a coded lock. That was three years ago. And we're not sure if each bedroom still has a coded lock, but it's critical because we've tried to figure out how did the killer get in to a locked bedroom? And then how did the door perhaps get locked on the way out so that the roommates couldn't get in and thought someone was passed out on the other side? That's critical. But I also think it's very critical that she thinks that the target 
was the kids, not the home, and that it was someone they knew and trusted. But And then one more thing, uh, Brian, about the fact that the, the girls were found in Maddie's room and not Kaylee's room. I think it's important for our viewers to know that Kaylee was in the process of moving out. So it's possible that many of her things yeah. were scattered all over the bed or the bed was in pieces or had no bedding and that that's why she might have been in her best friend's room. But if the killer went into Maddie's room and yet Kaylee had more injuries and it's dark, it's the middle of the night, this complicates things even more because if Kaylee was the target, then how would the killer know which one of the girls that was in, in Maddie's room if they were sleeping? Because they, they look a lot alike and in the dark, it would be very tricky to tell and certainly it wasn't Kaylee's room. So very, very big find uh, that you've discovered, but even more complicating. Yeah, certainly some big developments tonight that really uh, help us piece together the story. Ashley, I know you've been covering this every single night on your show. You and I have been on the phone late at night discussing all of this, uh, and we'll continue to do the same thing uh, next week. Yeah. Ashley, thanks so much uh, for coming on tonight. You bet. Okay, we've still got a lot more to come. Uh, we are live in Moscow, Idaho tonight. A News Nation exclusive, a look inside the crime lab system that handles all homicides. Questions. About an hour later, uh, Idaho State Police Forensic Services, they're pouring over what has been taken from this scene. Uh, they've been in the home multiple times. News Nation got an exclusive look uh, at the state crime lab. Alex Capriello joins me uh, live now. Alex, you know, there's so much frustration among the community. So many people are wanting answers quickly because, you know, you see the TV shows. They think that they can get these results fast, but it seems like it really does take quite a bit of time. Right, it does. That's exactly what we learned from the Idaho State Crime Lab. The fact of the matter is that this is an incredibly complex crime scene and obviously, with the killer still on the loose, every bit of evidence is crucial to try to crack this case open. The knife, the incredible amount of blood, and the complexity of a bustling home with plenty of visitors. The forensics team is on a case like few others. It's so very complex. We're not talking about a person that just randomly walks up on the street and stabs somebody and walks away. We're talking about four individuals here. Forensics professor and Body Bags podcast host Joseph Scott Morgan also taking note of how the murderer slipped into the home on Moscow's King's Road. No broken windows, no broken doors. And for the investigators, that's a big piece of information. It goes from if you're looking at a potential suspect, what level of familiarity did they have with this environment? Did, did they feel comfortable in it? Did they know their way around? Would they say, you know what? Maybe I don't want to go in the bottom. Keep in mind, the two people that live downstairs, they didn't die. And also in this case, a complicated stew of DNA from the roommates and as a hopping college house, many guests. It'll spin, it'll inject the blank, it'll spin back. News Nation getting an exclusive look inside the Idaho State Crime Lab outside Boise. This is the DNA casework lab. Ready for the complexity of this case and others. The lab demonstrating for News Nation how elimination fingerprinting works for cases with a crowded home or in a car with passengers. You can see that's a really nice print that you left on the glass. But Idaho's director of forensic services reminds the public speedy and slick TV evidence processing is not the real deal. We call it the CSI effect. Some people think, well, we should be able to do this, but the technology doesn't exist for that yet. Time certainly moving slowly back in Moscow with the decision to tow the victim's car weeks after the murders. Wherever it is they're storing them, I hope that it would be at the Idaho State Crime Lab because at crime labs, they have actual evidence processing garages. At that scene, what did they have? They had a piece of yellow tape going around that was providing security. One solid tip bolstered by the careful processing of a single clue left behind. The best hope to find justice for four young lives. And just fascinating um, to see inside that crime right. lab, the work that they do behind the scenes. Explain to us why this in particular is such a complicated scene. Right. Well, I kind of briefly mentioned it in the story, but when you think about it, I mean, just look at it. It's a rather large house, first and foremost. Three stories to it. That's a whole lot of evidence for investigators to comb through. And then not to mention just the proximity to where it is on the college campus, frat row, obviously. Some of the fraternities and sororities are just about 200 yards away. We're told that this was a place where 
people partied, people socialized. Mm -hmm. And so that's a whole lot of people that are coming in and out of this home, which could really muck up and blur some of those lines and that evidence in there. And I know police are remaining tight-lipped for the most part, but are, do we have a time frame when, when more of this evidence could come back, the testing? Well, this is the benefit of actually being able to go to the Idaho State Crime Lab, right? We were able to ask them that, and they told us that they've already processed some of this evidence and they've gotten it back into the hands of the detectives. So right now, information is coming in and they are processing new information, but obviously this could take weeks as, mm. like I mentioned, a lot of evidence to come through. Thanks so much, Alex. Yeah, it's just fascinating to see inside that crime lab. It's not often that you get, get to see inside a crime lab like that. Uh, so we've still got more to come. Alex mentioned it, still evidence being taken out of the house. You saw the brown paper bags. We got that video uh, yesterday. This is all so active. Uh, more coming up after this break live from Moscow, Idaho. Obviously been rumors and a lot of the talk has been focused on whether Kaylee Gonzalez may have actually had a stalker, I asked her family to clear that up. Can you talk a little more about, um, a lot of people have been wondering if Kaylee had a stalker, if that was really true? I said this, she's a pretty girl, her friends are really pretty, so them attracting attention was, it was pretty common wherever they went. So I think, she attracted attention, whether that's a dedicated person following her around, maybe not. I, I do believe that the officers looked in it and, they, and I believe what they said, that there was no evidence there. Are you confident with the way they're investigating? I think it's hard to say this way or that. Um, they're obviously holding it very tight to chest, which could either be a really, really great sign or really, really bad sign. And I think depending on not even the day, the hour, um, especially my dad and I, we go back and forth between they got this and kind of falling apart a little bit and, you know, really looking at specific events that have been strange or maybe should have been looked into more in our eyes. And it really is just so heartbreaking what that family has been going through. I thank them so much for trusting me and allowing me to come into their home uh, and talk with them. Uh, it, it's so easy to get caught up in the investigation, all the new nuggets, uh, that, that come out with things, but behind the scenes, this is really about the victims and it is about their families. The pain that is even worse because the killer is still on the run tonight. If you are watching this and you have any information about what happened here, think about those families tonight. You can stay anonymous. The number for the police is on your screen. Someone has got to come forward to ease their pain and to make this community finally feel safe again, because they don't feel safe. We are not going anywhere. We will be here covering the story. I'm Brian Enton. Thank you so much for watching this News Nation special report live from Moscow, Idaho. <laughs>
Okay, this might work. So basically, um, I don't know if that's, that's not like a very good picture. Let me try to find something else. So Ethan and Zayna were found, um, you know, down here in this bedroom. This is the second floor. So then after they, um, you know, that's the second floor, one and two. And then um, Maddie and Kaylee were found in bedroom two over here. So they are pretty far away from each other. Okay, here's a picture of it. So I think it would be Zayna, Ethan here. And then Maddie and um, Kaylee like up here in this room. So like that's pretty far. I think that that's why that, that nobody heard anything. I don't think that they would even be alerted if like say the crime started in e um, in Zayna's room. I don't believe that. I mean, I don't believe that it, it's not impossible that you know Matt, Maddie and Kaylee wouldn't have heard anything. Because that is that's pretty that's a pretty far distance. Hi, simply updated. Oh, I like your avatar. It's cute. <laughs> oh, you have a channel. I need to check your channel out. There are a lot of good people on live right now. I'm still I'm still kind of tired from last night. I'm not gonna lie, but we had such a good live last night. And like, I mean, I loved, I loved that we, I was able to stream the whole um, interview for you guys because I don't, I didn't, I didn't see any other channels doing it. So it was really nice that I was able to do that for you. Um, I did have a couple more videos, but it's basically kind of just like going over what the video went over. But um, I wanted to show you that and then I will, I'm going to leave that up that way. I could um, go back to it. And the father is saying that they came in the sliding door, the slider door. I do have those interviews too. I should pull those up actually. Um, let's watch those ones. Give me just one second. I'm going to pull these up for you. And then I want to make sure I get both of them. I'll look for the other one while this one's playing. Okay. Oops, sorry, that's loud. Good evening, America, and welcome to the special edition of Cross Country in Moscow. Okay, so this one is um, Kaylee Gonzalez's parents demand answers three weeks after Idaho murders. This was, um, yeah, this was like a day, a day and a half, I think, ago. So um, I just wanted to play this for you guys. And then there is an updated version of this video as well. And I'm trying to find that, and I will play that for you next. So that way you have it. Um, has what has anyone seen the ring camera for picture of the? No, I haven't, Lisa. The person in a mask and a black coat. Wow. What? No, I haven't. It was it around? Who had that ring doorbell? I wonder. Because they've been talking about um, asking people for that kind of information. I just feel like. I'm still stuck on the front door. The way that layout of the house is, I wish I had a, I need a blueprint of that house. I'm going to find something actually, maybe to show you after I'll have you guys watch this and I'll, maybe I can find something um, for you guys to watch or for you guys to look at. I can find it. Idaho tonight. We are in front of the Moscow police department and you may be asking why. It's been about three weeks since the horrific stabbing death of four college students at the University of Idaho. Three weeks since we lost Zayna, Maddie, Kaylee, and Ethan. Three weeks and still the police have no suspect or a person of interest. The community has been left in limbo, left with more confusion and more questions. We are on the hunt for answers for them. Moscow deserves answers. The students of the university deserve answers. These four young innocent victims deserve answers and so do their families.
So let's start there. Joining me now on set, the parents of Kaylee Gonzalez, Christy and Steve Gonzalez. Thank you all so much for being with me. Um, you guys have been so transparent and strong for the public. Christy, you called the person that did this the boogeyman. Yeah. What did you mean by that? It's literally like what nightmares are made of. Like when you're a little kid and you think of the boogeyman, that's just how I feel. Like that's just the horrific details of everything. Them just having a good time going home and going to bed and this happening to them. Your best friend crawling into bed. Just crawling every, in bed. Every girl and the in America comes. knows what that's the like. The boogeyman doesn't, you know, meet, meet you at McDonald's. I mean, the boogeyman comes and snatches you out of your bedroom. Steve, um, we've been talking. I've been talking to folks in the community. You said something that stuck with me. You said, until this person is caught, you can't sleep in your bed. No. I can't just lay in my bed and do nothing. That's not the way I raised my family. That's not the way I raised my girls and my son. You, you don't be a victim. You stand up for yourself and you do everything in your power to make sure people hear you. Now I'm gonna, they're gonna hear Kaylee. They're yeah. gonna hear Maddie. They're gonna hear these-, these The other two as well. Yes. Oh, I, I'm careful saying anything about them because I need to be careful because I can't speak on somebody else's child, but these two girls, I'm not trying to be a glory hound, but these two girls, I'm gonna do what I can do and we're not being victims. We're gonna fight. We're gonna figure out how to make sure that we hold everybody you know, accountable and we keep eyes and attention on this and, and get this thing resolved. Steve, you have made it very clear to our audience that you are supportive of law enforcement. You support the investigation. But recently I've been watching and talking with you and you're getting frustrated. What does that frustration come from, sir? It puts certain people between you and the officers that are making things happen. And those people are like lawyers and they don't want to say anything. And they don't, they don't have the guts to come up and be alpha and be like leaders and say, hey, we might say something that's wrong. We're going to take that hit. So the officers, they look me straight in their eyes. The lead de detective looked me in his eyes. He, I, get, I have no doubt he's working as hard as he can. But somebody isn't communicating. There's nothing being released. It seems like they're, they're trying to suppress the story. They, we want to put rewards out there. Like, don't do that. Yeah, I get it. Your town doesn't want to have reward posters posted all over when you come and you do your rush. You're not going to get a lot of students if they see those things. But this community is not going to heal until this guy's pulled off the streets. It ain't going to happen. Think it through. It's not going to happen. He has to be off the streets. We all are working for the same thing. When was the last time y'all heard from the police? Thursday. Thursday, we looked at our phone records. We want to be accurate. We don't want to sell anyone out. About three o'clock on Thursday. And, and did y'all get an update from the police about the investigation? There was nothing. We have no updates for there you. There was no update. They the needed me to sign a waiver form so that they could investigate something. Some mail. That was mail related. So we're working with them. We're not selling them out. We love our law, law support. The FBI, everybody that's here. I've, we just have no information as family. And it, it's um, tough day after day after day. I mean, every day you just wake up and think today's the day. We're going to hear something. And you see these, oh, there's a break in the case. And it'll just be something stupid. The sixth you know? person in the, there's, on the lease that was never there. Stop playing games. This is serious. These are people's lives. And this is the future of this community. There's going to be 10,000, 15,000 kids that come into this community next year. Or they don't. So be I, serious. I, I had the opportunity to speak to some of my sources and I've been told that there were differences in the way that the victims were killed. Some were more severe than the other. And this week we heard the tar target attack walk back and then reverse it back to it being a target attack. What can you tell us about the targeted attack? Um, they have told us that it was targeted, and but they told us they can't tell who. We asked specifically, and they said, we'll try to get that information to you. And they got back to us a day or so later, and they said, we're sorry, we can't give you that information. But then a day later, we saw in the news that it was not targeted, or they think the whole house was targeted. But I'll cut to the chase. Yeah. Their means of death don't match. Maddie's. They don't. And Kaylee's. 
cause of death, it does not match based on the autopsy report. They don't match. Yeah, yeah. Would, would indicate that one of them He doesn't have to go up the steps. Target. Let's stop playing games, guys. I need somebody to step up and be an alpha. Be somebody to be a leader. Don't make me do it. I don't want to do it. He doesn't have to go up the steps. Their, match, their, their points of damage don't match. I'm just going to say it. It wasn't leaked to me. I earned that. I paid for that funeral. I paid for that. It's my right. You ain't taking that from me. Calm down. If you don't want to say nothing, that's your bet. But don't say I'm leaking anything. I paid that bill. Sent my daughter to college to get an education. She came back in the box, and I can speak on that. I was also told from sources that are closer to an investigation because there was a lot of roommates in there. And this was horrific for those roommates that were there as well. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. The pres preservation of this crime scene. Witnesses tell me that it may have well been preserved because the phone was passed around, around between, between one of the fraternity members and the girls. One of them unfortunately witnessed the death, the body there. Can you confirm that? Uh, we cannot actually. We know nothing about that whole phone call we've asked. And, and it's, I mean, I know that a lot of people want to know, but that's just not our agenda. We just are like, somebody called 911, somebody was reported unconscious. We don't really know. I mean, we've heard so many different things and nothing has been clarified or, or been told to us at all. And, and I mean, I don't know if I personally have asked anything about that. I don't know if you've asked that, but um, we know that this is getting three weeks in and it's starting to get, we don't want it to go cold. Um, we're, we're reaching out. I reached out to uh, friends down in California today that have uh, connections that we're hoping to get, raise some money to get a reward, to get a private investigator. Um, third party. Third party. Why, why go the private route? Do y'all worry that at the end of this week that this case may be cold? We're, we're scared. Can you we're tell scared. me you don't want a, 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 a photo up there with a reward offering information? That kind of sounds like you're trying to like suppress the story. I mean, why do you not need help? But hey, I could be wrong. And you officers, I apologize if I'm wrong. Yeah. I want to please forgive me. Please forgive me. But if but if you don't have the information, people do know if they don't, then you Give know, we something. the community, this is a community that is IT based. These guys live a digital footprint like we've never, all of us older people, we don't know how much that digital footprint could be helpful. So that's what we asked for. I hope like a DNA, uh, a family lineage, if they could come out here and just start taking, this town is not that big. We could figure out this and it might not be him. It might be a family member. We have family all going to the school together. You know, there's cousins, there's aunts, there's uncles. We could yeah. find this guy there's just a, with volunteers. Lineage many, many companies where our, yeah. yeah. Put yeah. Idaho on the map. Christy, Steve, we're going to stay on this case. Thank you. We're not Thank going you. anywhere. Thank you. You guys have been candid with us. We'll keep at asking questions. Um, any resource that we have available, our audience is praying for you guys. Thank you. Thank you. I, it was big for you guys to come back to Moscow yeah. tonight. I know it took a lot of courage it to do it. And I'm hoping we can get some answers for you. Thanks Thank so much for joining me tonight. Just... Uh, oops. Does anybody know, um, like, where her parents are from? I, I'm not sure where. Um, I could. I mean, I could Google it. I was wondering where Kaylee was from. So does she live in does she live in California? No, I don't think that's where she lived. Anyway, I just was wondering, I was just wondering how far it was. I was wondering how far her parents were traveling. Um, you know, just to like ask the police what they're doing in things like that. She lived in Idaho. That's what I thought. The parents are from California. Well, no, I know that she lived, um, 
like in the house because she went to school there. But I was just wondering, so the parents are driving from California. So that was right, what I saw. Concord, I think it said. I was just wondering um, the, the difference. I was going to like put it on my maps. <laughs> I'm just curious. I mean, you drive, you would drive anyway, you know, wherever to, for your kid, but I was just wondering. And then Moscow. It says it's 13 hours and 49 minutes. If that's right, wow, that's, it's not too far. Maybe, oh, okay, they live about two hours away. I must have looked it up wrong. So I'm like, wait a minute. Encyclopedia of the True and the un, True Crime and the Unknown. Oh, I like your name. Do you have a channel? That's a really cool name. I have to check it out if you do. If I haven't already, I'm always floating through. I'm always floating, floating through True Crime. <laughs> I really am. It, I love that. The channel's I love to watch true crime. I was actually, um, earlier today, I was watching another creator and they were talking about how like they do true crime, but they don't watch true crime videos. And I was like, oh, I was like, I don't imagine my life like that. Okay. Did you hear about the mom getting arrested right before the murders? I think she got, I thought she got arrested right after. Zayna's mom? Yeah, because um, the other night on my live, um, Somebody commented like after my live, I don't know. They commented like the next day that they were like, you're Zayna's mom. Just admit it. Stop fooling everybody or something along those lines. And I was like, what are you talking about, sir? I was like, okay, I am her mom. I said, I was like, okay, Sherlock, you know, let's shut down the true crime community, you know, community. We don't need it anymore. Cause he told, you know, he's that guy just knew. I had another one to show you. I'm trying to find it real quick. Okay, there we go. Um, so then he did another interview. So that was the first interview that they did in front of the police station that we just watched. And basically, Kaylee's father, I want to say like Kaylee, Kaylee and Maddie's father. I, I don't know. You know, the, you know what I mean? He's fed up. And he has every single right to be. Um, she just, he just does. And so does the mom. And... I can't imagine what they're going through. I, I just, I can't imagine that. I'm not a parent, but um, I don't know when you lose your parents, you think like more of a parent. I don't, I don't know how to explain it, but that's how I do anyway. I just, I have like a, a genuine heart when it comes to that stuff. And so he's fed up and I feel his pain. He said, you know, he's wondering why, and I'm wondering why, why haven't they put, been able to put up reward posters because they're afraid that people are going to, want, going to want to come to their school. Because to me, that's ridiculous. They should have reward posters, banners, freeway signs, whatever it takes to get the word out that they need information and they need tips. Of course, it's going to flow through the internet. But then, you know, we get in the true crime community, then we get, you know, stomped on for talking about it. But if we don't talk about it and they're not putting reward posters up, then this case was just going to go to the wayside, you know? And you noticed when, after the interview, how thankful they were that this, you know, that they had that interview and that they, the news station was not going to give up and not stop talking about the ch their children. So I just thought that was really just a sad interview. Um, he, he said that, you know, they said that they, the police told them that this was a targeted event. Well, obviously um, and it, it was, I think, I think also, but then, you know, a couple of days later they come out and they had to hear online that it wasn't a targeted event, that it was the house, which I think that's bullshit. I'm sorry. I, the house is not the target to me. What, why do you want to live in that house? So you're going to kill four people, but not six, not all of them. How are you going to move in? Unless you know the two surviving roommates. Do you know what I mean? That would have to be like a weird setup, like where they knew those roommates, but those roommates didn't know that they were going to do this. I don't know. That would just have to be a whole thing. So we, I'm not even going to let my brain go there. And he also said that they didn't have to go up the stairs. And to me, 
before we realized, you know, all the stuff that we found in the other, you know, the last interview or the interview before that we watched, I think that he was saying like, if the targets were on the second floor or the first floor, he wouldn't have had to go up the stairs to do anything on the third floor. So that means he targeted one of the girls on the third floor. That's what the father, I believe, is saying. And that's why he went up the stairs. Yes, he's very hurt. So let me see. Um, Encyclopedia says it's already all over the internet. Better oh, better it be a soft case all over internet than unsolved all over it. Exactly. Yeah. Because we're just, I mean, that's just, it's just, we're not going to stop until we find out what happened. Um, simply updated, some, uh, simply updated, I'm sorry, said, I'm not 100% on this, but someone said Maddie was stabbed so bad in her neck that it was pretty much decapitated. He's hurt. Yeah. So I heard about the decapitation thing too, but then, so, um, I wonder if I still have it up. Maybe it was this. Um, I'm trying to find out where I had it. So, um, we, we did, we did look at a video of the coroner and like what she said. And she did say that they had, um, what, what did she say? That, that they had stabbing to the chest and then the neck area. But when Ashley Banfield asked, did they have any slashes to their neck? I remember her saying no. But when I find the interview, it's like almost cut off at that point. So let me try to find it. Um, interview with Idaho. Oh, I saw a corner on that. Was it. Okay, so let's try to watch this and see if she um, says it. You know, it was late at night or early in the morning, so um, it seems likely that maybe they were sleeping. Were they found in separate areas of the house? Um, that hasn't been disclosed yet. Uh, can you tell me when you say that they might have been sleeping, were they found in beds? Um, yes. And so can you tell me if there were multiple stab wounds per victim or were these sort of, you know, individual lethal uh, stab wounds that may have been... Um, less in number, but more in, in uh, lethality? Um, there were multiple stab wounds, um, yes, um, on them. So, and were there, go ahead. And most of them had just like one that was the lethal uh, stab wound, yes. Can you describe what that one might have been? Um, but they were to, um, the fatal ones were to the chest area or the upper body area. Were there, um, and I only ask this because it sometimes determines what kind of a, a crime this was, a crime of passion, a, a random crime, a, a fight, a struggle. Was there, uh, were any of them uh, slashed? Were, were any of their necks cut? Um, or were these all puncture wounds? Well, it was a pretty large knife, so it's, really hard to call them puncture wounds and they were definitely stabbings. And, um, I mean, it has to be somebody that's pretty angry in order to stab four people to death. Okay. So let me just cut that off. I had a couple of questions um, for you guys. I actually just like, I was thinking of some stuff. So do you think, and I mean, I hate to say this, but so the coroner is saying that, they were like pretty, I think pretty much like stabbed in the chest was the fatal wound. But do you think if the decapitation is, is correct, if that is true, do you think that that could have been performed afterwards? Like after they were already deceased? Like I'm wondering how long he was in the house. Like how long was he there? Did he come in and uh, commit these crimes and then just walk out real quick? Did he take time? after he found the person, you know, that he was targeting. I'm, I have questions about that. 
Like, I want to know how long he stayed in the house. Because that's suspicious. I mean, he could have been in there for hours, for all we know. But I don't think he would be in there that long, knowing that the roommates could wake up early morning. I wouldn't think so, but then again, I don't know. What do you guys think? I'm going to show you guys the second interview that Kaylee's dad did also. I'll go ahead and show you guys that now, and then we'll talk about it. And I think that's like the last one I have to show you, but I have some Reddit stuff I was going to show you guys as well. It looks like people are doing some Reddit, <laughs> some Reddit stuff. Um, let me see here. Let me share my screen here. Um, And then this, this is like where he kind of clears everything up. I hate this stupid thing when it does that. Today marks three weeks since four University of Idaho students were Stop brutally stabbed that. to death inside their home. And investigators still have not named the suspect. Officials are coming through thousands of tips, crime scene photos, and evidence. I'm going to try to turn it up, but it's being stupid. Victims, Kaylee Conclava is now revealing the manner of death for his daughter and her friend Maddie were different, leading him to believe one of them may have been the target. The heartbroken dad, Steve Conclavis, joins us now. Steve, before we start this interview, I just want you to know how much our hearts go out to you. Um, that I, I know from what I'm hearing from people everywhere that they are with you, they're praying for you, and they're also hoping for justice to come sooner rather than later for your daughter and her friends. Um, you mentioned here, you talked about the manner in which Kaylee and Maddie were killed is different. And what does that tell you? And what are the police telling you that that means? Uh, there's a couple things that tell me with common sense, but um, I'm not a professional, so I want to specify that. But they said the entry point was the slider or the window. It was in the middle floor. So to me... He doesn't have to go upstairs. His entry and exit are available without having to go upstairs or downstairs. Looks like he probably may have not gone downstairs. I, we don't know that for sure. But he obviously went upstairs. So I'm using logic that um, he chose to go up there when he didn't have to. And um, I can kind of tell by my daughter's texts, messages. She didn't call 911. She wasn't uh, saying anything along the lines of like she'd heard something or she was in fear so i'm just putting the the, the dots together um as far as the investigators they're very tight-lipped and they're keeping everything close to their best and i understand that and i'm probably not the right person to share all these things with so i'm just trusting them that their case is super tight and they don't really need to reach out to the community and um you know all the evidence is right there in that home so, Steve, and I want to be respectful, as I can tell you're trying to walk this tightrope as well with law enforcement, but the desire to know and get some type of action as well. Um, you, you've said both now to Rachel and then I, in, in the clip in your appearance with Lawrence Jones that th your daughter and, and Maddie had different means or manner of, of attack, and that suggests one of them was targeted. Um, can you share with us, do you know, and you can't share either way, which one was targeted? I can't. I asked for permission to do just that, and they said no. Um, I probably over disclosed information that they wish I wouldn't have said, but this sto the story's going mm -hmm. cold. There's less people coming to Moscow. Um, I'm not going to go sleep in my bed knowing that I could get up and I could go to town and I could, I could do something. And I'm not going to go away. And I, I hate to be a pain, but as a father, I just can't even sleep thinking that I, I could be doing something. So that's, that. what, that's why I'm up. Understandable. Wow. Let, let me ask the flip side too. I, you, you're, you're being respectful toward police about the fact that they need to be tight lipped. Um, but if there was something you felt like you deserve to know or you should know as a father at this point, uh, are, are there questions you have unresolved from the police that you feel like, hey, just throw me a bone here and let me know? For sure. I mean, alibis, just share the alibi. If you're not sharing an alibi, to me, it tells me that you're not 100% confident that it's going to stick or you have somebody who's going to come forward and say, hey, 
I don't know what he told you or, or that person's alibi was, but I have this information. I have something. So if you don't share the alibi, it, it makes it a little bit harder for us to just let those go. Mm. And, and I've said it before. I don't, I don't want to make victims out of just bystanders and witnesses. So I just share those things and um, that, that would help. Steve, do you get the sense that you're being asked to not talk more and that law enforcement is being so tight lipped to protect an investigation that is honing in on a conclusion or because they're totally lost and there is no real sense of direction. And I think all of us, we want to trust law enforcement. We want them to do their job. But I, I don't know if you know, I have no idea. Is this thing honing in at this point or is it scattered all over the place? Wish I knew for sure. I did sit down with the investigator, the lead investigator, and I, I looked in his eyes and I, I got a sense that this guy was going to do everything in his power to get to figure something out. But if the invest, but if if the evidence isn't there, that's that's the part that I'm concerned. And then there's layers of separation. The communication is not the same as the boots on ground. All the officers that are out on the streets, those guys that are working their tails off. But there's a different person to do us the communication, and that guy's sitting with the lawyer, and that guy's sitting there telling him, you know, you got to protect things that are beyond the case, like the town and the community and the and the, the mm. college itself. Those don't matter as much to me. I mean, I definitely don't want to hurt them, but um, I have an agenda, and I think it's pretty clear. It's a, it's it's these two girls, and uh, that's what I'm working for, and I'm not going to let that story fall apart. Just because they don't want wanted posters, you know, on their next rush of students that come into town. Wow. You know, mm. I have to say, Steve, I hadn't really considered those factors, but it's obvious that that would be a consideration for the communications director of, uh, of the police department and also the PR for the school and the town. Are you communicating with the parents of the other victims? Are they feeling as frustrated as you are? And I hate to ask a two-part question, but I'm going to do it anyway. Do you feel confident in the police investigation and the people investigating right now? I, I do not feel confident, and that's why I push the envelope and say a little bit more. I hate to be that guy, but, um, you know, there's a job to do for everybody has a job and a role to play in this. Includes, this is my role as the parent. I have talked to obviously Maddie's mother and, and her father, and I've talked to um, Zana's father, and uh, he, he said, hey, you can speak on behalf and you can help push this narrative. So I feel confident there. Um, that's as far as the real communications that I have. So one family have missed out to being able to be in the same location and the same thing to really get on the same page. So I try not to mention that and um, stay within my lane of what I, is my, my role and uh i'm not trying to just gear it all to my daughter it's just I, I can't speak for other people yeah um steve before we let you go just share a little bit with our audience about kaylee kaylee was amazing hard worker she was like she hung out with two boys uh, her, her brother and her cousin and she was right in between them. she wanted to be faster than them she was that girl that was like really like she was kind of like this a uh, 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 a punky brewster type girl and uh, we, we, we missed out on a, a really smart person that was going to um, be a little conservative. She was conservative too. She was always looking up stories on child, you know, getting trafficked in. And she was telling me that she thinks it's a lot bigger than, than people understand. So, and you know, we, 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 we can't replace her guys. There's no replacing any one of these people. Steve, we're all parents on this, yeah. on this couch I and um, I just can't, tell you how much we feel for you and can't imagine what you're going through you and your whole family um and i know that you came on the show today because you're hoping that people that might have information you're hoping that more information come forward and so we encourage anybody to call 208-883-7180 the phone number is on the screen right now and i've heard you say it before steve it could be anything you have no idea how small the piece of information could be that could help you know and steve good on you for agitating we yes need, we need more men and fathers willing to do precisely what you're doing um, keeping people honest and, and working toward a solution. God bless you. You're doing your daughter's right memory proud. And frankly, you're an amazing example of, of fatherhood. 
even after something tragic like this happened to her. Thank you for joining Thank us. You, Steve. Thank you. God bless. Thank you, guys. Have a good day. Bye. I think that's so sad. And, like, the lady, like, she, her voice cracked, like, when she was just saying, like, she, you know, keep pushing forward and you're, like, doing a good job. And I think he needs to hear those things, you know? I mean... He, he, almost, he pretty much lost two, two children, like two daughters, two daughters that were 21. They didn't even start living their life yet. They, you know, I mean, damn, 21. What were you guys all doing at 21? Were you guys in college? I mean, cause this could happen to anybody really. Even if like, you're not like, I don't know. I used to go to like different schools. Like I am from, a, I, I live in Ohio and in Ohio, you would go to different campuses, like, you know, and you would like party kind of and those kind of things, you know, um, you would end up in people's homes that you didn't, you didn't know who they were. Like it was college. Um, I went to school online. So all of my friends would invite me to their colleges. So I would go to like Athens University, which is like known to be like, it was the number one party school in the country at one point. <laughs> um and then like, so we would go there because they would have different festivals. And then we would go up to Ohio State. And at Ohio State, literally people just open their doors up. They have music playing. They have beer pong outside. Um, I'm 37 now. So of course I don't go back there. But when I was in my 20s, I did. And, you know, we would like go play, like, go play beer pong. And, like just people's homes. Like you would just be walking down the street and they would be like, hey, do you want to come in? Like, do you want to hang out? Do you want to party? Blah, blah, blah. It could be guys, girls. It didn't matter. So, and I also think that could be why somebody could have gotten their key code very easily because of the fact that people came in and out of that house so frequently. And that wasn't a bad thing, really. It's just the fact that they had five people that lived there or four people, sorry. Um, so, you know, they had, you know, enough people that live there to where if they all brought a couple people over, you're going to have a house full of people just automatically. And I'm sure, you know, they didn't think twice about giving out some of those, you know, those, those numbers. It's just really sad. Um, in the second interview that his, um, Kaylee's dad did say that they came in through the slider door, he believes, which I still cannot get over this, the front door. I like just... I, I just can't get over it. I'm going to have to look at, find a blueprint of that house. Um, Cause I'm just like, Oh my gosh. I know. Like trying to think, I think they had one on Reddit. Um, let's see. I might have to like look through and then, um, I don't know, come back on later and show you what I'm trying to talk about because I need like a blueprint of the house. But um, actually, I could probably get on the. Let me see. I could probably get on um, Zulu or whatever it is and find it. I'm just going to put the address in really quick and see if I can find it for you guys. Oh, good morning, Sarah Sunshine. Oh, you were at the doctor's appointment. Going to have to sign off when the doctor comes in. Oh, yeah, no problem. Just tell the doctor we said hi and to subscribe to my channel. Don't forget. We do have a lot of medical stuff on here, so <laughs> he'll like it, maybe. Let's see. Uh, maybe I can find it. Maybe we can do it this way. I just don't want to sign in. I just want to look. Like, okay, that's not showing me nothing. All right. All right, my friends, I'm finding it. Maybe we'll see. Oh, yeah, I did go on college pad before and that worked. Um, are these all the photos, though? Like, I, they might not give you, me enough. Wow. Okay, maybe, but no, it's not really giving me enough, but it is kind of, let me see. I can show it to you. 
I'm trying to show you like kind of like what I was, what I'm thinking the way he came in. I'm because th I'm thinking the front door because that front door was left open. But um, let me see here. So this picture here shows the steps like coming down like that's the front door right here and then that's the stairs that come up to the first floor and then this back here is going to be Zayna's room does everybody see that i'm going to leave that up for a minute so if if what i'm thinking is right um because this is the way i'm thinking he came in i'm thinking he came in the front door and he took a immediate left or immediate left came up the stairs didn't even go to that front. See the, um, you can even see the, the molding or the, whatever it is around the, around the door that goes around the door, the wood trim. So that's the other bedroom right there. And that's going to be this room right here. And this is one of the girls' rooms. It was painted nicer when they lived there, but that's, oh, sorry. This is just an old picture, but this is the one that I wanted to show you because this is the front door. And if he went up the stairs, that's how I think he would do it. Because, like, if he comes in, he's going to go up these stairs. He's going to go around this corner and, bam, first two people. That's very easy to get to. But if you come in the back slider door, I don't know if there's a picture. Like, you have to come in this room here. So you have to come through the kitchen. And then... You're going to have to come through this living room here. There's a living room and then come around the corner to this bedroom. I just feel like that's a lot more work. You're coming through three different rooms because there's also that other little pantry room that's not shown. So you're going to come through three different rooms to get to the back. I don't know. I just don't see that. I see this is so much easier and it's not as lit up. They have all those back porch lights that are like super shining you know, the ones that are hanging that they still have on that they haven't turned off. And then they have like, a, like they come around the corner. So they're very like, it's very bright back there. So I just don't see somebody wanting to, you know, come in through that door. I may have to go through the Reddit stuff with you guys later. My dog's out there. She's, she's starting to cry a little bit. I think she's got outside. Um, unless you guys want to wait, but <laughs> I could always have you guys wait. Um, and then this room here would have been um, Kaylee's room, or Maddie's room, I'm sorry. And then the other room would have been, oh, let me get my notes out. So now I'm getting all mixed up, guys, because I've got so many notes, it's, un it's ungodly. Um, well, they were found in Maddie's room, so that's Kaylee's room there, sorry, because that has like the balcony on it. And then this must be super old picture of this house. But that's the only one I could find, like, right off the top. So, let me see. Yeah, wow. These are, like, not very good pictures. Okay, that was nothing. Well, who would want to rent this place if they didn't know it was there? You know, like, seriously. Like, there is, like, nothing good on this, like, how, like, on this house search. That It all looks, like, really dumpy. Fabulous location right next to campus. Hmm. Let's see. Is there a virtual tour? No. Okay, yeah, that's not going to work. Okay, so anyway. I thought that was going to be something, but it's not. If you are just coming on to the video, please give this video a like. That way it gets sent to the algorithm and more people can enjoy it. I'm checking Twitter one more time before I jump off of here for a little bit, just because my dog is crying. Unless you guys don't mind if I run them out to the side yard, just let me know in the comments below because I could put some music on while I do that. If you want, if I have, okay, so if you do not have me on Twitter, add me on Twitter. I just retweeted the News Nation special on the Moscow, Idaho murders, the full report. I have the full report now on my Twitter. My Twitter handle is at titanium underscore built. 
If you want to follow me on TikTok or Patreon or Instagram, it's all at, at Titanium Built. If you want to email me any questions, comments, concerns, or you're just having a bad day and you want to talk, my email is at titaniumbuiltboo at gmail.com. I figured I'd tell you guys that. Is every man in Idaho named Jack? Yeah, Jack or Jake or Joe. They're all J's. I said that I said that on a couple lives ago. They're not allowed, no more J's are allowed in that state. They're just done with that. They're yeah, they're done. I think that's that's it. That's crazy. Um, I'm just making sure I oh, I wanted to show you guys this. Okay, so I'm gonna show you this interview that they did with um Maddie's dad. And I just wanted to show you guys because there's not a lot of um interviews and stuff with him, you know, and he's just a sweet guy and I just feel real bad for him. So I'm going to have you watch this really quick. Oh, it's been hard, but uh, we've got a lot of family support and a lot of friends that have been uh, really great through this. And uh, my, my work's been really great. Um, but, you know, every day is, every time I wake up, I really remember what's going on. And uh, it's like, that's, I don't know how you ever get used to this. It's never going to. Life will never go be away. Oh, you know, just how how good of a how much she loved her friends and her family, and how much we loved her. And uh, she loved working here at the Mad Greek, and uh, she loved wearing pink. Uh, she loved her boyfriend Jake. Um, yeah, she uh, she was just always. I never saw her in a bad mood. I never. Uh, she was just always so so. Uh, Bright and, and positive. You just make everybody smile. She loves to you by. Uh, she, uh, the last time she talked to me, she, I work, I do security at the at the WSU football games. And the last thing she asked me was, hey, can you sneak me on Jake into the Apple Cup? <laughs> I told her, of course. <laughs> yeah. And she was dating Jake for a long time, mm -hmm. right? Yes. Yeah. yeah, we love Jake. Yeah. Um, you know, I, you always just hope for a, a resolution with something like this so we can start moving on in our life. But, uh, I mean, they do check in with me every day and, uh, and let me know what's, what's going on. And I just have to hope and, and trust that they're doing as good a job as anyone could do on this. But, uh, I mean, I don't know, I don't know, I've never been through anything like this, so, uh, but yeah, it seems like they should uh, have figured it out by now. But I don't know. If anyone knows anything, just please just help out and just give us some closure and some just uh, some so we can move on and and get through these days a little easier. I don't know if that'll make that happen, but just uh, I mean, it's hard, you know. Isn't that sweet? Oh, here it goes. Let me go back to you guys. Okay. Yeah, so I just wanted to put that on there because I just thought that was really, like, I feel so bad for all of their parents, you know, but the guys that have come forward, the men that have come forward to talk, it's just a whole different level of, you know, pulls on your heartstrings. Is that, is that what is it? Is that bully horns goofy hat hanging back there on the, on the hook? Oh, my God. <laughs> I didn't see it, but I'm sure, you know, she was keeping her ass warm as much as she could while she was there. I saw one of her lives and she just sitting in the hotel and the bed. And I'm like, so basically people we're talking about bullhorn Betty. If, if anyone wants to know about this, we're just taking a little side tour here, but uh, yeah, I'm like, so basically people are paid for you bullhorn Betty to um, lay in bed at a hotel and do a live. If y'all want to do that for me, I'll go somewhere. Send me like somewhere warm though. I don't want to be, I don't want to go. Well, I, I'd go to Idaho. I'd stand out in the cold. I stand out there. But if y'all want to put me up in a hotel, you know, and I'll just lay there and I'll do a live and y'all just watch me be me. <laughs> oh, thank you so much, Mr. Werewolf. I love that. Thank you so much. Yeah, this has been such a good chat today. And last night was a really good live as well. We've had some really good lives lately. Like, I mean, the cases are traumatic. I, and I don't like that. Like, I don't like the part of the where we have to talk about that. 
but with the chat and everything, it's been um, really nice. We haven't had anybody, you know, do anything really ridiculous. It's been really very nice because I don't have mods, as I said in the beginning and kind of throughout the, the live. I don't have mods yet. I'm trying to do this kind of on my own. I like it. I think it's more personal. So that way, you know, people aren't just like screaming at you every couple minutes. And if it's someone screaming at you to do something, it's me. <laughs> So I think that's all I really had. I They didn't put out another update on the Moscow um, homicide page. They haven't done that yet. So I'm not sure why not. But I am going to get some more information together. And I'm going to sleuth a little bit and see. I pay not to send. I, I pay you to. I pay. Oh, sorry. I can't even read that right now. I pay to send you, not her. Oh, that means a lot. Because I really would do a lot more than her down there. Or over there. It's actually over there for me. But um, yeah, she's just, she's something else. I can't handle her. Maybe I should watch some of her stuff and get some like good content and come back and like rage tonight. Cause you know, I can rage on some bullhorn Betty. I just got to put her on two times, the you know, X or something. But I am going to come back on tonight. If you guys haven't seen my lives the last couple of times, I got a new camera, a new web camera. So my last web camera worked fine. Like it's perfectly fine, but I got this new one and woo, we guys, y'all can see me like no other. So that if you see like a difference in my videos, that is why. Oh yeah. Betty is back in my town. Oh my gosh. Bradenton. Hopefully she, or hopefully she left that house for horse tail hat behind. <laughs> I think we all have a common thing here. We have a common theme that we all don't really prefer Betty. I just don't like people that take other people's money for not for and they don't do anything like there's a lot of creators that ask for donations for things like i just ask you guys just like to subscribe you know like the channel or the videos all that good stuff if you want to send a super chat that's appreciated but and join the membership but i'm not going to ask you for like thirty dollars hundred dollars two hundred dollars i'm not going to ask you to send me anywhere or buy me a new computer or buy me a camera that's why I have subscribers. So I need to reach 5,000 subscribers, guys. I'm, I'm, I'm halfway there so I can get my neon light. <clears throat> See, I get stuff like when you just subscribe. So you guys subscribe. I get 5,000 subscribers. I'm getting me a neon light that says titanium belt. So, oh, thank you, Beer Can Island. I like your name. Oh, I like your emoji. Oh, my gosh. It's a turtle with like a peace sign. Oh, I love that. I just don't have respect for that woman. No, I don't either. And the thing is too, then, then it comes into being the whole, her, I, when I first heard that she had disability on top of like her sitting outside of Quentin Simon's house. Cause that's when I kind of really got to know her, like who she was, was like Kylie Rodney. And then mostly Simon Quentin or Quentin Simon. I'm so sorry, guys, Quentin Simon. I'm like half asleep today. I'm so dyslexic, but she was just out there just like asking people just for money and, I just lost all respect for her. And then she said she was on disability or I heard she was on disability. She didn't say that. And then I, then she said on one of her lives that she had been standing outside for nine hours. And I'm like, well, then what is her disability? If she could be standing up for nine hours, you know, like I can't even do that. I am, I am up some subs from the other day. I am. I'm doing really good, guys. My, um, I've been really excited because, okay, so I own a boutique and I kind of been like unmotivated. I've been really unmotivated over there and I love my boutique. I'm going to put, um, actually in the comments, I'm going to put a banner up for you guys if you want a coupon code for it. It's just pretty much like a cute little boho chic boutique, kind of like an altered state. I don't know if you know what that is or like a dry goods, a Rose and Remington maybe. But I just haven't been like motivated really over there. And I've been just really motivated over here with YouTube. But my boyfriend, like he's not really talkative. Like he doesn't really tell you that he's proud of you, but he, you just know he is but he, like, he'll say it every once in a while, but he really doesn't say it. But he said it last night. Like he was so proud of me. Like my subscribers are going up and all of that. So that just meant like a whole lot to me that he said that. So I'm like ready to be doing it all. There goes my dogs. Hold on, Mia. That's Mia. So, all right. Okay. I'm going to get off of here now because my dogs are barking. They're just being, they're just crazy. I know what's going to happen. This is what I'm going to get up, go out there. They're going to act crazy. Come in here. 
And then my big dogs want to act like she doesn't have to go to the bathroom. Like she hasn't been out there barking. Yeah, I try. I do have some skills. I do have an LLC. I own a boutique. So yeah. And I do true crime and I have all this metal. So check out some of my new, my videos while we're on wait on a hold. And I will be back to you guys here shortly. I'll probably do another live tonight. So just make sure your bell icon is on for notifications and you're subscribed to the channel. Sorry about my dogs. <laughs> I will see you guys all on my next live. Bye guys.